Hey guys, hi. Hello everyone, hi. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so we're just gonna um, wait a couple of minutes for everyone to join today's session. Welcome, welcome, hi. Hey guys, welcome. How are you? A little bit of change of scenery a little bit in my office today. Decided to shift, shift around. Hey guys, welcome. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Um, thanks for hopping on today with me for today's CEO Lunch and Learn session. Um, I'm in an especially good mood today. First of all, the topic that we're gonna be discussing is one that I am extremely passionate about because it's about financing your business, how to fund it. Um, but I'm extremely excited today and in the best mood because guess what? Guess what, okay? Ah! Ah, oh, naturally, Cindy, you are reading my book and you love it? <laughs> Thank you. Aww. Oh, and thanks for liking my hair, guys. Thank you. I used Alec Hay Naturals products on my hair today. My hair is a old, dry, <laughs> old, dry twist out. No, old, wet twist out that is um, needing to be like retwisted and done. And because I didn't have time, all I did was slick my hair up using that lemongrass hold it styling gel that you can get at Target. Or, and I use that here too. Um, you can get the Lemongrass Hold It Styling Gel at Target or on AllieKNaturals.com. But yeah, I use the Lemongrass Style Collection to do this cute, quick style. Did some little like cutesy curly thingies in the front to make it look like I tried. So yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, Monero 04, thank you for enjoying my book. You guys, oh my goodness. Like, okay, so let me just say, I am so excited, which by the way, guys, um, we may have temporarily sold out on Amazon of the hardcover. Um, as of this morning, the hardcover is temporarily out of stock. So our team is trying to work on getting that fixed. That's on Amazon, but you can still get the hardcover right now on Barnes and Noble. We selling out, okay? We selling out out here in these streets, okay? <laughs> so, um, no, but on a serious note, I'm very excited today um, for today's session because I'm doing this session on my official book release day. So, my and heavily anticipated book, 90 Days to CEO, officially released today. It's out there. A lot of you guys are already reading it. And I, I, I logged on this morning and saw I already have an Amazon review um, because someone started reading it and got so excited she had to come back and give an amazing review. I'm so grateful for that. So I just want to tell you guys, as you are reading my book, please make sure that you are um, giving, giving me reviews on Amazon or Barnes & Noble um, so other people know why they need to purchase this book to either start or to um, get tips on operating and running their business. So thank you guys in advance for your support. My first book signing is happening on Thursday at Altamont Springs in Orlando um, on Thursday. And I'm also gonna be at FAMU um, at the end of this month as well. I'll be announcing the date probably on Friday. Um, but yeah, I'll be at FAMU as well signing. So couple dates will be coming up. Stay tuned for the announcements. But if you don't have the book, make sure you get it. It's available in hardcover and also in paperback um, as well. All right. And it's also available as a ebook if you're an ebook person. All right. Now let's go ahead and get started with today's topic. So today we are going to be discussing and reviewing um, financing and funding your business. Um, we actually talk about financing and funding your business in chapter nine. Um, chapter nine in 90 Days to CEO is called Opening Up Shop. Oh, I hope you can get to um, FAMU as well to meet me. That's awesome. Uh, so chapter nine, you guys, is called Open Up Sh Opening Up Shop. So as we have discussed um, with my book, 
we have so the, my book is 90 days to ceo it is a guide to avoid business pitfalls and unlock the secrets of entrepreneurship um, this is based on my decade of experience as an entrepreneur a successful entrepreneur um, so of course i am the ceo of allocate and co-founder of allocate naturals beauty products that are sold in all major retail stores and sold in over 26 countries we started our business with a hundred dollars and now still a decade later are a debt-free um, multi-million dollar beauty empire and that's what we're here to really talk about today is the financing portion of business but you're gonna receive so many gems um, in this book, you guys. I spend the first eight chapters mentoring you and teaching you everything that I wish someone would have taught me before I became a CEO. I started my business at the age of 22. There was a lot that I did not know and I have spent the past decade doing a lot of trial and error. So all the mentorship that you could ever want is in the first 212 pages. Now, chapter nine and chapter 10 are when I get into more of the educational, um, real educational portion of business foundation. So chapter nine is opening up shop. We talk about the steps that you need to take to be able to start your business. I also break it down for you into a 30, 60, and 90 day plan and give you a very defined, well-structured checklist that tells you exactly what you need to do to start a business and gives you the actual options as well that you have. Um, chapter 10 is lock and key. Lock and key is where I teach you now that you've opened a business successfully, I'm gonna teach you how to run it, okay? So that's what we talk about in chapter 10. So today is about finances. Um, one of the things we talk, and I'll tell you exactly where, excuse me, Okay, so we talk about the financing options that you have to start a business on page 255. And I want you to make note of this because if this is the area that you are struggling with in your company, um, which is how are you gonna get the money to start, that's what page 255 is for you. So 255 and it takes you all the way through 200 and page 263. Now specifically, bootstrapping I expand upon bootstrapping a lot in this particular section because bootstrapping is how I started my business now there was too much information on your options for financing your business I could not fit it all within this chapter this book is already 422 pages I had to scale back a little bit with um, providing every single option but guess where you can find that so I actually created a bonus um, bonus sheet for you that gives you 22 options that you can use to start and finance your business. 22 different options, okay? This document and this, um, this checklist cheat sheet on the 22 options is actually available on the book resource, the 90 Days to CEO resource page that is on my website. The only way you are gonna know exactly what, ah, thank you, thanks for loving my hair today, encourage entrepreneurs. Um, the only way that you're able to get access to this resource and the other resources that I provide from the book is if you actually have the book. So when you purchase the book and you read, it, I actually tell you in the book the secret URL that you can go to on the website that only my book purchasers have access to. But just know that I give you a checklist of 22 options as well of how you can finance your business. And it's printable, so you can actually um, fill it in and take notes on it, okay? So I'm not going to go through um, that with you because that is going to be reserved for those who have the book but what we are going to talk about is let's talk a little bit about bootstrapping okay um so with bootstrapping so again if you want the 22 resources um and options that you can use to finance your your business make sure that you um, purchase the book and then go when you go to the resource page it's organized super organized you guys and i'm consistently 
adding more resources um, to the site as well. Now, when it comes to bootstrapping your business or before you decide what avenue you're going to be taking to be able to fund or to finance your business, the first thing that you need to establish is how much startup funding do you actually need, okay? Now, we have an ideal amount that we would like to have, okay? But there also is, so there's a want and then there's a need. When, when you're thinking about a startup, especially if it's something that you're going to be bootstrapping, I want you to simply focus on your needs. What are the necessary items, tools, resources, whatever, support, whatever that you are going to need to actually get your business off the ground. You can have a wish list as well as, as to, oh, if I have additional um, capital, then here are some bonus items. But what you have to do is, again, be very honest with yourself, lay out your list of all the things that you want, and then you have to go in and pull out the, pull it down to the bare bones skeleton of what are the necessary items. Think about if I only had a small amount, and this is the mindset to have, if I only had a limited amount, what are the basic, basic, basic things that I need? Once you've established your basic needs, then you can attach to that on your planning, your financial planning, and say, okay, well, how much are each of these components then going to cost me, okay? When I thought about things in this, the same way I do as well, um, no, my book is currently not available on Audible, unfortunately, but it's available paperback, hardcover, and also ebook as well. Um, one of the things that you also want to think about, you guys, is allocating... Um, so once you've scaled back, you've figured out, okay, well, these are the costs. Think about them in two parts. What are the costs if I DIY it, okay, or if I bare minimum this option? And then what are the costs if I get this, um, if I get this exactly? Thank you for mentioning that. Um, what are the costs if I do this with a professional or get an expert or hire someone to do these items for me? So I always like to have things in two categories. So and, and by the way, you guys, you can literally do this by creating a spreadsheet. You can create a checklist in Google Docs or whatever, Word. It doesn't matter, but list your, your wish list. Okay, so let's go back. Wish list. All the things that you wish or you think you're going to need. This is my I want it. I want this and I want a photo shoot and I want a, a this and I want a custom logo and I want branding and I want apparel and I want all these things to go with my business. That's a want. Then I want you to Bring that thing down to a skeleton. What are the necessary, bare minimum, I need to get this business out in 90 days, I need to start in 90 days, bare minimum items, then you need to establish, then you need to attach a cost to each of those things. Attach a DIY cost, if I did this myself or I went the really super cheap route, and then what are the costs if I get this done professionally? Then you can weigh your options because then you're gonna have um, your totals at the bottom as the DIY total and then the professional total. And then you can decide, okay, well, which ones do I really need to get someone that is an expert to do? Pull those out into your next, you know, your next column. So this, I'm going to get a professional to do. This one, I could probably DIY this. This one, I can get a professional. Then you can think about, then that's going to help you to see what are the potential costs that you might have to incur while um, going through your startup. I think as well to be smart, once you have that grand total, I would allocate and probably add on an additional 25% to that as well for unexpected um, costs. By the way, if you guys have any questions, make sure you drop them below with the little question mark. I always answer three people's questions before the end of my life. So then you want to drop it down and say, okay, well, let's say your cost came to a thousand dollars or whatever then you can say okay well let me bump that up an additional 20 or 25 percent for miscellaneous for those incidentals then that's you creating a startup budget bare minimum and this is important you guys i'm specifically talking about in this case bootstrapping or if you're doing something that you're not going to be receiving any outside investments and you're going to have to be raising the capital so this can be bootstrapping or this can be the multitude of other things that you can do, which I talk to talk about in the book that you can do to raise capital to um, to fund your business. Okay, but you have to have an established budget 
of what you need in your startup fund. And the reason that this is also important, you guys, to have a budget, not only is it gonna help you figure out how much money you need to save, make, or raise, but it's also going to help you because you have to remember when you first launch a business it is extremely rare to start generating consistent revenue immediately upon launch sometimes you launch today it may take a couple days a couple weeks sometimes even a couple of months depending on the type of business before you may then generate revenue to or have enough capital to keep the business going so this is another reason why you have to make sure that as we'll talk about the oh yeah hold on this is another reason why um expense expense management is also so important in your startup stage of your business because if you're bootstrapping you only get to spend what you make okay so that's the startup portion of it so what exactly is bootstrapping Bootstrapping is using solely the money that your business makes to put back into it. It is building a business with existing resources and earned revenue, okay? Now, the pros about this are it proves if your business can survive, it gives you full control of your company because you own your business 100%, you, are the, you own your entity, also, it helps you to retain exclusive control. There are also additional benefits of bootstrapping as well. Cons, it can be very, very stressful, okay? Because when you don't have the capital to do certain things or you don't have the capital, you will face certain hurdles like payroll issues, scalability issues, all because of lack of access to capital. So that's something to be mindful of. Also, another con of bootstrapping is um, another kind of bootstrapping is that it can slow your growth if you're not careful because you cannot afford to do certain things or to scale, okay? So that's one of the biggest things about bootstrapping. So bootstrapping is, again, using the money that you earn to put back into your business to feed it. Now, before we get into my rules of bootstrapping that I'm going to go through with you, let me just tell you why I am the person to talk to you about, the expert to talk to you about this specific topic. Um, as I mentioned earlier on, and I know I'm repeating myself a little bit because some of you are just joining, but I started Allocate Naturals in college, okay? My husband and I were in college. I was um, pursuing my business marketing degree, I planned to go to law school. That was my thing. Um, and I was not necessarily, I started my brand, Allocate Naturals, more so for myself. And because of the success and the results that people were seeing on me, I started to create products for other people. But it wasn't a, a structured business idea or plan. I just I was just doing things that I enjoyed, that I was passionate about. I was passionate about teaching and educating people and helping other people. I still am 10 years later. But when I came to my husband, so I made my first bottle. I had done a second big chop of my hair, okay? Cut my hair off a second time. I needed my hair to grow back as quickly as possible. I was on YouTube at the time. This is before YouTube was paying people. So don't think, okay, well, she has 500 or 400 videos on YouTube. YouTube must have been paying her. No, YouTube was not generating any revenue. At that point, I probably had like 200 videos already on YouTube. Um, but no, YouTube was not generating revenue for me. The only way that I was making money was I was waitressing at Olive Garden. I was a waitress. Um, I was throwing newspapers with my husband, so we made money that way if, if needs be. And then I was also a CNA as well, which didn't last long, but I was a CNA. So I was working multiple jobs because I had to pay my way through school. We lived in a two bedroom apartment, so my husband and I, we had rent to pay. We were married super young, so I got married when I was 20 years old. So we were on our own and we had to figure it out. So after doing my second big chop, I was like, wait a minute, I don't have any hair on my head. I need to figure out how I'm gonna get my hair to grow back as quickly as possible. So that's how Allocay Naturals actually started was I needed to make a growth oil to grow my hair back fast because I couldn't do a hair tutorial if I didn't have hair. So I made my Essential 17 hair growth oil using my herbal knowledge and research and 
it was working fantastic my hair was growing back so fast even to this day it's funny I just what on yesterday's live you guys were commenting how much my hair already has grown back so fast because I just did another big chop six months ago like all the way down and it's already back it's coming um but anyway so people started to see my results and they're like man you should sell this you should you know and you guys are probably relating to this because you probably all have an amazing business or hobby or something you're really really good at and people are telling you man you needed to make that into a business you should sell that and you're thinking um that sounds good but where am i going to get the money from that's exactly where i was so i'm here thinking i was like well how am I going to sell this to these people? I had an Etsy page up because I had my other jewelry company. I was make hand making earrings and jewelry. So I had my Etsy page up and I was like, well, I could sell a couple of bottles, throw it on my Naya Money Chic Etsy, it'll be fine. I went to my husband with the idea and he quickly humbled me, okay? He reminded me, we have rent coming up, we have the light bill to pay, so I think it's a good idea, you should do it, but as long as it doesn't come from the money that we need to you know take care of ourselves so I called a friend let me tell you I don't take no for an answer I didn't allow money to be an issue for why I was not gonna start my business I called one of my friends Tiffany and switch shifts with her excuse me I took her one of her shifts and I made a hundred dollars that day in tips that was a good day by the way okay that was an excellent day um, so I made a hundred dollars and I was able to use that to buy my bottles to buy more of the ingredients that I needed to make my oil and then for labels I decided thank you money making maven um, I decided to just go to Staples and buy some labels some literally Avery labels you guys um, to make my my first essential 17 hold on you guys one second Catherine yes. can someone um, I'm on Instagram live but can someone pull down the the evolution box for the growth oil for me please I need it for live thank you so so I'm back guys. I'm just getting um we're here at Allocate Naturals headquarters. So I wanted to show you guys the Oh, you can reach it. Thanks, Kat. I'm tall. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Can you pull the door somehow? I know the banner is like gonna like hit it at some point. But all right, so I want to show you guys this, okay? This is a little show and tell because most of the times when I talk about this, no one gets to see what I'm talking about. So this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. All right, so I wanna show you guys. So when I say that you have to start, if you're a bootstrapper, you're gonna have to start with what you have and you're gonna have to start where you are, okay? This is my first bottle. When I tell you I use Avery shipping labels for my label, I'm not kidding. This is my first bottle of essential 17 this is my design this is my product okay this is an avery label as you can see when it washed off um as soon as people started to use it the the text and stuff washed away and but they could see that it was a growth oil right this was the next version that i made so after ali k started taking off you see i got like my little stock image i was like crap i need to put information on here so people know how to use it so i added some text it wasn't until years later probably like three years two or three years later that we got our first label actually made um which actually this is not it my team has this in wrong order so i'm gonna have to have them fix that um, but it was this one next, okay? This one. And then we made this one. And then we temporarily had this one, which if you want to know, if you read my book and you hear me talk about the ugly syrup, syrup packaging, this is the one I'm talking about. You have to read my book to know why I hate this packaging so much, okay? And what went wrong in business. And then this is our current packaging, okay? So... I want you guys, when you hear me say, um, hold on, let me switch back to me. So when you hear me say, I started with what I had, I'm not joking and I'm not saying it to be cute. I'm very serious. That's how I started Allocate. That's what my product looked like. Sorry, I know it's not um, focusing. It's because it's on this side, sorry. But yeah, 
That's how I started Alec K. Hey, and that's that's where I started. And I'm not embarrassed, okay? Right now at my Alec K. Hey Naturals headquarters, my team, they were like, um, so you want us to display these? These have been on display for a very long time. We actually just re redid the boxes. I am proud. I am proud. You see these 20 something people, 25 people that work in this, this building and whatever. I want them to know because not all of them were with me when I started a decade ago. It was me and my husband. Then it was me and my husband and my grandparents. So I want them to know how far we've come because we're not even where we're going to be yet. Okay. But I want you to understand when I say I started with the bare minimum. So when I tell you pull that business, if you don't have the capital, if you have it, then great. That's fine. You can do whatever you want. You can plan however you want. But I want you, if you don't have access to capital and you're going to have to bootstrap, don't let that stop you. Don't let the lack of finance and funding stop you from pursuing your business. Start with your basics and you can scale and evolve and improve as you go. Alake is still getting better. We're 10 years in the game. I'm consistently improving my brand, consistently improving everything that I do. So after making that money and buying the basic things, you guys, I put my Essential 17 on Etsy and it sold out. Before I could even go on YouTube and announce it, it sold out and it consistently sells out. And now that product, because I believed in myself so much and I loved what I was doing. Passion is a big thing, you guys, because entrepreneurship gets rough. You gotta be passionate. I now am selling one of the top selling hair growth oils in the world like in the world on in retail my essential 17 hair growth oil why because i wasn't afraid to start i didn't care that the packaging didn't look cute i wasn't embarrassed that my friends and family were gonna see it and it's not its best it's what i could afford all i cared about was how good was that product inside were my customers going to get the results that i promised them focus on providing quality products that are effective okay and quality services that's what's going to keep people coming back that's what's going to keep you generating revenue and then you can use that revenue to scale your business and to get better but don't allow lack of funding to talk you into this self-talk of oh i can't start all right now let's let me give you some um, bootstrapping tips okay first thing is manage your expenses your expenses you guys expense management is so important you eventually are going to get to the point that you're going to need all the additional tools and tips and this and I want this as well and I need this app to run my business and I need this software and this computer and this this in the beginning start with the basics keep your expenses especially your reoccurring expenses as low as you possibly can where they are manageable because as I mentioned before when you first launch your business you're not always going to come out the gate generating revenue so your revenue Part of your, I'm sorry, and I forgot to mention this to you before. Part of your startup, um, part of your startup with how much do you need also needs to include at least three months of covering your expenses, minimum three months of covering your expenses. Six months is ideal. Um, so if your expenses to operate this business when you're starting off, you're like, okay, so what am I going to do? Okay, I'm going to have to pay for my website. That's $47 a month. I'm going to have to pay for my domain. It's how much per year and it's this much per month. I'm going to need to pay for this scheduling app that I need for social media. I'm going to need to, you know, this. I'm going to pay for this. Calculate what your reoccurring expenses and monthly expenses are going to be and make sure that you budget into your startup fund three to six months minimum if you're bootstrapping. Again, this is if you're bootstrapping. I have a totally different strategy if you're someone that is starting a business with funding, okay? That's when you can get a little bit more formalized and technical, okay? Now, managing your expenses and keeping them low is key. The next tip is only purchase what is an immediate need. Don't overspend. You don't need to buy things in excess so if you're buying things in bulk for cost savings, that's one thing, but don't buy excessive things that you don't need. You have to manage your, your spending and you have to purchase things that you need immediately. It's almost like a just in time way of, um, just in time way of running your business. Th thank you, Melissa Q for buying my book. Thank you. 
Um, so that's another bootstrapping tip. Purchasing what is an immediate need and making sure you don't overspend. Next tip, find discounts in everything, okay? There's absolutely nothing wrong with looking for discounts in all the areas, every, every vendor that you shop with, every website that you purchase from. Can you sign up for some sort of rewards program? Um, Staples, for instance, is where our company buys, um, I mean, Staples and then we buy bulk as well, like um, from Costco for the company. And then we have Uline that we shop with, but find out if there are ways for you to um, like with Staples, they have an amazing rewards program. They have a, a ink and toner recycling program. You have to find ways to save money every way that you can. I also have a hack, a really good tip on how you can save money with your business banking, but you have to read the book for that tip because I share that in chapter nine, but it's something that a lot of people are like, what? You do that? You, got, you can do that? I'm like, yes, you can do that. It's going to save you hundreds of dollars. Okay. Um, the next thing is work with vendors that have payment term options. So cash is king and capital is king, okay? So when you think about your capital, it's how much money, how much cash flow, how much money do you have on hand? The worst thing is when you know you have accounts receivable, you have money that's coming in, you may have customers that owe you money and payments that are coming in, you may have products um, that are coming in. About five questions about writing the book um shoot me um you can shoot me an email at my info email and i should be able to answer you there melissa info at um rgbusinessuniversity.com um but yeah so when you're working with you want to make sure that you're working with vendors that are allowing you payment terms as possible meaning you can pay them in 30 days 45 days 60 days 90 days after receiving your goods or after placing the order this gives you time to generate revenue elsewhere, make some money elsewhere, get paid from some of your customers or clients, and then you can pay those invoices off instead of, oh my gosh, I need to buy envelopes or whatever. I need to get these envelopes. I'm going to put all my money into that. Well, you may have payroll coming up. You may have a light bill that's due. So it's like, okay, how can you toggle it? You can't tell the light company that, okay, I'm going to pay you in 90 days, but you can tell a vendor that you're going to pay them in 90 days. We rebuke this connection. Oh, goodness. It sucks. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry it's freezing, guys. Um, the next thing is when you're um, pay your invoices monthly so that they don't accumulate. Your accounts payable, you are your accounts payable department. Um, yeah, Melissa, if you have a question, can you write it below for me, please? Because I won't be able to, I'm focusing today on bootstrapping, but I'd love to answer your question. Just drop it below in the question box. Um, sorry guys, I know this thing is going to cut me off in 23 minutes, so I have to stay focused. It's a one hour time. Um, pay, pay your invoices monthly so they do not accumulate. This is where it comes to maintaining your accounts, um, payable department. So you want to make sure that you are paying your invoices as you go. Keep again, but if you're keeping your expenses as low as possible in the bootstrapping stages or in the beginning, then you should be able to manage that. Excuse me. If you are paying yourself at all, two options. In the beginning of bootstrapping, you either aren't paying yourself or if you are paying yourself, pay yourself your living expenses only. No excess, nothing more. Okay. That's something that is also a really good hack that was able to help my husband and I a lot, okay? Now, if you want to talk about numbers and what our pay structure was and how and when we started paying ourselves, when did we pay ourselves? Did we pay ourselves in the beginning? How much did we pay ourselves? All of that is in the book. I did share. Um, monitor your bank accounts daily to avoid overdrafts. That's another key. Again, you're a small business. You're, you're dealing with limited capital, you're bootstrapping, meaning the money that you're making, you're putting back into your business, things happen, don't be embarrassed by it, but you have to find a way to monitor it so you can keep those costs low. Have backup funding available. You always have to have emergency funds, always. Don't let your business run out of cash flow. So I always think about you have to diversify as best you can. Um, you have to diversify the ways that your business is generating revenue. So you don't just put all of your eggs in one pot. And if you do, like if you are unable to diversify your business, um, your business revenue channels, then you want to think about what else can I be doing outside of this to make sure that I have some sort of backup fund, whether that's a side hustle 
or something that you're doing, your regular job, you have to have something else. So just in case your business finds yourself in a, a tough spot that you need to bail it out, then bail yourself out. Some people, their backup is their, their family member. They can call them if they hit a, a rough spot. But do know that when it comes to bootstrapping, cash flow management is the most important thing. You have to monitor what's going in and what's coming out, and you have to be prepared for emergencies. Um, reduce your excess spending in all areas. We talked about that. Um, pay a small team well, but have multiple roles. So in the beginning, I was a solopreneur. It was me, myself, and I. I was mixing, I was bottling, I was also wrapping earrings, making, I was doing the marketing, I was making videos, I was doing all the shipping. Then when we started to really, like we started to generate money, well, generate a lot of orders um, and attention, my husband was like, crap, I need to jump in and help. So then he jumped in and we were running it together. So he was doing the mixing and I, he was doing the packaging and I was doing the labeling and whatever, like we switched roles. So when we finally um, hired our first two employees, those were my grandparents. And so we paid them, but we paid them a flat fee, um, a flat amount every single week. So it was salaried, but you know, not really salaried, but it was salaried. Um, and it was just a small amount. It wasn't a lot, but my grandparents, they didn't need to work to pay bills. So um, it was fine. When we first hired our first official employees, that's when we realized, okay, well, this is just a complete different shift. By the way, we talked about that on yesterday's training that I provide you with tips on how to do your first hire, legal documents that you're gonna need, and I also have um, my interview questions that I ask people when I interview them to work here with me at Black Onyx World. I have those on the resource page on the website that you can get if you purchase the book, okay? Um, but you want to pay a small, have a small team and have multiple roles. So when you make your first hire, and we talk about also how to decide when to make your first hire and what should they do, but people are going to have to have multiple roles. My first official hire, I called her an office assistant, but she was the shipping department. She handled all customer service inquiries. Um, she was posting on social media for us. She assisted me with things that were needed. Um, she helped me with any errands that I needed to run. She helped to clean the office. Everyone that comes on, especially in a small business and a startup, needs to understand, oh, thank you so much, needs to understand that they're going to have to bear, wear multiple hats. This is not a, once your business grows and scales, like right now, of course, my business has scaled to the point that I have a director of sales, a director of sales. But guess what? Before that, my first employee, she was, she handled sales as well. She was the one that, you know, was sitting there with me and we're going through wholesale applications and she's calling back accounts and she's packing orders and samples. We did all of that. And then when I made my second hire, what I did not do was offload the, the responsibilities on my first hire onto my second. I took about 25% of the responsibilities from that first hire and gave them to the second hire and then put 75% of new responsibilities that business needed, different areas that weren't being fulfilled, about 50% of new areas, and then I took 25% off of my load. So what was I doing that I really shouldn't be doing in that business? So I was able to focus on my area of genius. That's how I made my second hire. I know it sounds really like complicated, but I promise you when you list roles and responsibilities, it makes sense, okay? Um, but everyone needs to have multiple roles because in the beginning, you're not going to be able to afford a big staff. Like ex a payroll is going to be one of the most painful and largest expenses that you're going to have to incur in your business, okay? Um, next thing is to make sure your customers pay on time. You have to have rules and um, contracts and agreements and also penalties put in place to make sure that your customers are paying you on time. If it is a B2B transaction, um, especially like if you're working with another business, if it's a B2C, um, then you're, you know, let's say it's an e-commerce or whatever, then that's a little bit different because your customers have to pay up front anyway in order to receive their goods. Or, you know, if your, your service agreement is, if you're a service providing business and it's like, okay, well, you have to pay up front before I hop on a call with you or I provide your service, that's fine. But a lot of times, especially when you're dealing with larger amounts, so when you start to 
you have a business that for instance one client you're making two thousand dollars from they may not always pay up front and you may then have payment terms that are set up and so you have to make sure that you have some sort of contractual agreement that is going to have that customer pay you on time because again when you are a bootstrapping business and because i am a bootstrapping business i understand the importance of it cash flow and capital is king if you don't have that money you can't pay your light bill you can't pay your staff you can't pay yourself which then means you can't pay your rent or your mortgage you can't buy the supplies that's needed you can't pay your invoices if you don't have it it's there there's not a mm, well my customers owes me some money you know can can you hold off on this it doesn't work that way in business you try to establish as many things in contractual um, format as best as possible to make sure that there's clarity between you and your customer whoever they may be as a business or a consumer okay put qualifying items in your business's name so that that's that's I don't even know I shouldn't have put that on the bootstrapping tips but um, that definitely does help as well for instance when you're purchasing a vehicle um, purchasing is and it's for you for your business like you're the owner or um, you know a co-owner or something like that and it's for business purposes hey Asia thanks for joining it's for business purposes you guys are driving back and forth to work this is the one that you drive to meetings etc that shouldn't be a personal expense that's a business expense but we will talk about that another time that just happened to be on my tip sheet it probably shouldn't have been for this particular topic and um, the final two things are forecasting is major as we talked about before you should always know what money is coming into the business because you have to eat you have to be able to survive so you have to know what's coming in and you also need to have a clear understanding of what's going out that's your accounts receivable and your accounts payable some people track that in just a simple spreadsheet format some people track that with accounting software like QuickBooks it, when you're starting off if you're not starting off with something like QuickBooks you can start off with a simplified spreadsheet but you have to make sure you know what's coming in because as your invoices come due that you now need to pay people then you need to make sure that you have the capital on hand to do so and this is also a great way to track if you're again dealing with a higher um, paying clients with products or services that's a way for you to track what revenue is coming in and the final tip that i have for you with bootstrapping is to always 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 and my my team can know that i say this as well you have to know your ROI, okay? You have to know what is your return on investment at all times. My brand, Allocay Naturals, we don't have investors, we don't have funding, we don't have, we're not operating off of using one credit card to pay another credit card off to pay another credit card, no, okay? Guess what we do? We operate and we scale within our means, okay? Which means, you may not be able to do what competitor A and competitor B and competitor C is doing because you run your finances or operate your finances a different way. You want to make sure you are mindful though that when you do make an investment, when you spend, because you have to spend, okay? You have to spend money to be able to make money in business. You have to, you have to spend on marketing. You have to spend on advertising. At some point in the future, you'll have to spend on PR. But when it comes to especially marketing and advertising, you got to know your ROI. So you just spent $500 to pay a, a so-called influencer or someone to do something for your business. What was your ROI? What was your return on your investment? What did you get back? Okay, you paid to participate in X, Y, and Z event. What's your ROI? What did you, what were your expenses? What did you put in and what did you return? You should always, unless it's PR, PR is a little bit different. We talk about in, in my book, um, 90 Days to CEO, I do talk to you about the differences between, of course, marketing and PR and then how to DIY and then when you hire someone, how to do it. Uh, but it's really important to make sure if you are bootstrapping that you have a return on your investment because you don't have the excess capital just to throw around. Anything that you see that I do with my company is very strategic. It's well thought out. And if I'm going to spend my money on something, I know that I'm going to get my return in some way and not just in some way. I have a plan for that. And typically you then establish what is your expected ROI? How much money do you plan on receiving back because those are considered as your KPIs, those are your key performance indicators for your business. So you then are able to measure if something that you did was successful or it's not successful, right? 
So again, you guys, today's topic was about bootstrapping. Again, if you want to get these bonus documents that I have, that bonus checklist that gives you 22 ideas, um, only one, by the way, on that list is actually bootstrapping. So I give you 21 other tips and ideas of how you can actually raise the financing for your business, okay? How you can get the money to start your business. I don't want financing to be the thing that holds you back. Excuse me. I don't want finances to be the thing that holds you back. So um, thank you guys again for watching today's um, session. Let's see, produce products, knowing upcoming trend, or were you passionate about it at the time? Uh, Melissa, yeah, so when I started making my products, it wasn't about the trend or industry. It was just because I was passionate about it. I really loved what I did, and I was thinking about the consumer um, who was not being served. That's really what it comes down to because I happen to be in my target market and in my target audience, which again, you guys, is not always the case. You may start a business and you're not in your target audience. That's okay. You don't have to be. That's fine. You can serve other markets or other demographics that has nothing to do with you. But in my case, to answer Melissa's question, I was a kinky hair black woman with natural thick hair and the products that were available at the time were only catered to looser curls and um, looser textured hair. And also the products that were available at the time that were affordable that um, contained a lot of chemicals. And I did not want to use chemicals in my hair at, at that moment. I wanted to really focus on being an educated consumer, especially when I learned the harmful effects of a lot of the um, the ingredients that were used in a lot of the products that we had been using since childhood. So for me, it was, you know what, I deserve better. So I'm not going to use this garbage. Um, so once I started to serve my needs in the same way that I am now, it's like a wait, each one teach one, I knew better. So I wanted to educate other people so that they knew better. And then it was like, Hey, Rochelle, well, thank you for teaching us about natural ingredients and avoiding chemicals in our beauty products and the harmful effects like fibroids and cancer. But um, where's the solution? So that's where Allocate Naturals was created, because then I was able to provide the solution. So it was like, Hey, you don't want to use um, a chemical filled leave-in conditioner. Well, I can make, I made for you the lemongrass leave-in conditioner. Here you go. Oh, you don't want to use a deep conditioner that has petroleum in it. Got you. Now let me make a clean natural option called the honey and sage deep conditioner for you. So as my brand grew, I was then able to expand and serve different demographics and hair types. So I started making products for my girlfriends that had curly hair because they wanted natural solutions too. Then way wavy hair, then straight hair, then locks. So that's how my brand grew. So I didn't necessarily pay attention to industry trend. Now I have started businesses, um, one of them that no one currently knows about. I did focus on it being um, determined by trend and also determined by a gap in the industry that I saw. I, I mentioned and I answered a question from someone yesterday who said, you know, how do you feel going into an oversaturated market? And I say, I don't because oversaturation means that the industry typically is healthy and viable. I focus on what am I going to bring to the industry? Like what is my point of difference? What makes me unique? Um, so yeah. So um, anyway, you guys, make sure that you pre, well, not pre-order, oh my goodness, order, ah, because today, 90 Days to CEO has officially been released into the universe, into the world. My book is now available on amazon.com. You can also get it on barnesandnoble.com as well. You have to hop on and order this book, you guys. I promise you, whether you are, are a startup entrepreneur, or you just have a business idea, um, you're like, wait a minute, I, I need help to get this off the ground, then I can definitely help you. I am your business fairy godmother, okay? I am your mentor in your head, your business bestie in your head, all of the things. Because once you purchase and read this book, you will understand how much information I have really put into these 422 pages for you guys. It is going to change your business life. And I'm very confident about this. Um, you can also purchase this as a gift for someone, your friends or your family, or even that coworker that keeps saying that they want to start a business and you just want them to shut up about it and actually start it. Give them this gift. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so, so much. All right. 
Um, yes, exactly. Oh, Melissa, thanks for loving Honey and Sage. And you are correct. Business is about creating solutions. Exactly. If you can solve someone's problem, whether it be with a service, and I, I say this all the time, when you create, businesses are about creating a solution. If you can solve someone's problem with a service or a product, they will pay you to do it. That's what business is. You are providing a value to that customer in exchange for some sort of capital for your company. All right. Oh, yes. Thank you for posting Her Soul um, Gold, FAMU, Thursday, February 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. Thank you because I didn't have my dates in front of me. You guys rock. Thank you, guys. And thank you guys in, in advance for supporting and purchasing my book. I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's session as we talked about finances. We talked about bootstrapping and all the money things that go into that. Um, tomorrow, we're going to be talking about, I believe, from idea, how to help you to generate an idea. If you're like, man, I wanna start a business but I don't know what to start, that's what tomorrow's session will be about. I will give you my five tips on how you can think of a really awesome business idea so when you get your book, 90 Days to CEO, you'll be able to just dive in and get that company off the ground. I've created a my success story. It's time for all of you to create yours, all right? Bye guys, thank you guys for wa watching and thank you for ordering.